think are the most common pitfalls students encounter in terms of time management? So. OK, um, well, if I think about my journey as an undergrad, oh, I guess probably one of um, you know, the big greatest pitfalls I had was leaving Everton th to the last minute, <laughs> uh, which I think, you know, it's, it's quite helpful now that I'm teaching with lifelong learning so that I can kind of advise students now, you know, I know that we're just, you know, on week one or week two, but this is when you need to do your reading. So I think, um, you know, one of one of the greatest pitfalls, uh, in my opinion, is leaving stuff to the last minute and then you know what that leads to is 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 you know panic mm -hmm. absolutely and Kira, over to you i would fully <laughs> agree with what Marin says um i too i undertook my own phd journey well i know i'm out of it now a little while but that procrastination is huge when you're coming down to sit down to look at a piece of work and I think um, we tend to consider everything from the end product and that sometimes can leave us even more overwhelmed that we won't get started and um, it's important to look at the over end product then park it and then look at the little bits that are going to inform that end product. And I think I know for myself with procrastination, it's huge and the effect it has on you emotionally while you're trying to deal with it means that you don't get any work done at all. Yeah. Um, and, and you do definitely panic then and then everything, it's like putting yourself in a whirlpool and you're not able to get out of it because you're lost in this emotion. I'm not going to get this done. Whereas in actual fact, you probably do have a little bit more time on your hands, but the procrastination has taken up a huge amount of it. So it is um, it is a big one to consider. I suppose one of the things is acknowledging at the very start that they some or a lot of them are going to experience procrastination and to be aware that it's a no part of the process of engaging with a new topic that when they look at an assignment brief that there is going to be that element of oh my god what's that about and then all of a sudden but not to, to accept yes that's part of this journey it's a case of get out your highlighter pen what are the main things that I will look at in this assignment what are the key words what are the essay terms or like is it critically evaluate and analyze or describe what am I supposed to be doing here yeah. and I think that helps deal with that procrastination but um I suppose when you're reading, there is such an overwhelming amount of reading to do in preparation for assignment. It's about uh, being aware that strategically they need to think, right, OK, um, I've got to read this, but it's critically reading the information. I'm looking for specific information in relation to my assignment, but it's also using your highlighter pen to highlight the main areas. But even taking that time to put that sentence or paragraph in your own words into the assignment mm -hmm. and to start the writing process first, because students I've noticed um, my students and even myself, we get lost in the reading part. Mm -hmm. Oh, I must read that. And then we say, oh, that part might be relevant. And then we don't think to highlight or put a note or have a separate document where we can say, yes, there's information on page such and such of that journal article that's relevant to my assignment that we can go actually back to. And then that can help manage that procrastination. I feel that's from my own experience and how I've tried to encourage students. Mm -hmm. I think there's an art, though, in highlighting. You know, yeah. like I remember at the very beginning, I would almost literally highlight the whole paper because I didn't really know what I was looking for. Yeah, so I think there's a kind of art. There's an art to that as well. And particularly at the beginning, it's it's a, it's a skill that kind of needs to be um, also addressed. 
Yes, I, I would definitely agree with that. Um, and I suppose that's part of that process of the learning outcomes for those assignments, that they're developing that as part of that. Yeah. And to, for yeah. them to be aware that those skills are being developed slowly, that they're not going to develop overnight. You know, yeah. sometimes we, yeah. they want to get to the end of the road before they've gone all the weavy bends before they get there. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So they're really great points. So really, I suppose what we're talking about, the procrastination is a huge thing. And maybe that almost like freezing. I always find it's it's nearly like you've got what it's the fight, fight, but freeze is the third one. I think that would that's key. And then you said about the overwhelm, which I suppose is what leads to that procrastination is that being overwhelmed. So um, two things to students should probably look out for and realize that they're definitely not alone in it anyway it's almost universal um so if we go back now to just moving on to question two and where and i'll ask you to read this one if you can um okay what are some strategies around time management that really work in your experience and for me the first thing I would recommend is make sure you have a diary in that diary. An academic diary can be really, really useful uh, because it starts in September and finishes in August rather than running from January to December. And in that diary, literally getting everything documented. When are your classes? When are assignments due? Putting in, even putting in time for yourself, allocating time in your diary for yourself, for self-care, depending, as Mirren was saying, like some topics can be quite heavy. And if a topic is heavy, you do need to have some time to yourself. Um, I would work with to-do to -do lists. They can be, I have found like, you know, trying to prioritize what needs to be done each week down and breaking it down to each day. And then Using your pen or I find sticky notes are quite handy electronically if you don't want to do a paper copy. And there's ways to use uh, strike throughs to delete stuff so you can see the progress. You're Oh, gosh, someone's <laughs> in I, I have the paper ones as well. And I also have an electronic version that I can and I have posted all over my my screen. So that can be really useful. Um, I find that um, allowing yourself, say, allocating yourself specific times to work on a, an area and not getting absorbed in it that three hours later you discover you have three hours done because